Dubai. Huh? Qatar. Who were the Qataris 50 years ago? Bedouins. Yeah. What does that show you? On a that shows you. Sir. 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 The prophet. The prophet said near the end time. And how do you know the what the end time is? Because of the prophecies. Okay, so the prophecies are going to come together. For example, the prophet You're said. Be here in 3, sir, years, so sir, 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 let me explain something. In the last couple of years, we have had the rise of certain people. Certain people with certain traits. These people, they have beards, they have long hair, they wear long clothes. And they, the way that they pray, it makes me as a Muslim feel inferior. The way they fast, they make me feel inferior. The way they read the Quran, they make us feel inferior. And what did the Prophet say about these people? He said they will be the worst of creation and they will come out. And these people, what, who were these people, the group that came? ISIS. They came and they killed and they did what? They looked like Muslims, but the Prophet said the Quran will not go beyond their throat. And here's the thing. You guys just here's the thing. Like, here's the thing. Like, here's the thing about the Khawarij. What, no, what, sir, 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 sir. The Prophet made a precise prediction about the Khawarij. He pointed with his blessed hand towards Iraq and he said, that's where they'll come from. Where did ISIS come from? Iraq. Tell me this, sir. Iraq, Syria, Yemen, Egypt, who were they controlled by at the time of the Prophet? The Romans and the Persians. It wasn't even a Muslim land. And he said, that's where they'll come from. So when the Prophet makes predictions, he makes precise predictions. The Prophet said, near the end times, and this has never happened in human history, people will have sex in public like donkeys and God, Allah, in another narration. That's what cavemen used to do. Hang on a second. Human beings, as far as we know, in terms of our yeah. civilized, recorded history, we wore clothes. Even cave people wore clothes. They even had cave people had cave paintings, they had burials, they had other things. So if you're going to make the claim that cave people had sex in public, you need evidence for that. But you don't have evidence for that. What we do have evidence for in human history is people wearing clothes. But here's what the Prophet said about this. He said, when people will commit incest, not incest, intercourse, sex, fornication, Allah, God, He will send down diseases that their forefathers have never heard of. A hundred years ago, who'd heard of HIV, AIDS, gonorrhea and these things, syphilis? Everything the Prophet said, he said it in a precise way. No, but the no, thing no, is no. this, sir. No, but the thing is like this, sir. People will build tall buildings. That's but not precise. He's a time frame. In order sir, to sir, play. sir. Here's the thing. If you have a criteria which is of that of extreme skepticism, the prophecies of the Prophet, peace be upon him, will still satisfy you. But there is one condition. Well, except you have to no, no, dis no, no, no. There is one condition. Don't worry about there is what, There is one. It. No, no. That's what you're telling people to sir, do. Sir, we'll, I'll answer your science question next. Don't worry. But one thing which is missing is this. If your heart does not want to recognize God, you will not see any signs of God. All you'll see is the opposite of God. All you see is evidence against the existence of God and against the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. But if you have a heart that is sincere, you will see the evidence for what it is. And it is evidence which is objective. Now, when it comes to science, sir, when it comes to science, science is something which is misunderstood. Science, we believe today in today's popular culture, is something which gives us certainty, which is the only root of knowledge. Let me ask you this. You're talking about science as a root of knowledge. Can science explain to us how mathematics works? No. Can science explain no, 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 to us we, how no, logic we know, works? We know how Sir. mathematics and logic works from their own... Like, yes, their yes. Logic is independent of science. Yes. 
Does science tell us whether testimony is valid or not? Whether what? Testimony. No, well, it, it depends on if there's a claim that's made that's scientific, then obviously we can. So, okay, let me ask you. Let, let me ask you a question. Do you believe in Kengis Khan? Yes. Yes. Okay. Have you met Kengis Khan? No. Have you seen his grave? No. How do you know he existed? He's a Muslim. What? How do you know he existed? I know because it's the He's a Muslim. He's a Muslim. He's a Muslim. He's a Muslim. That's a fucking Muslim. It's a reasonable conclusion. He's a Muslim. He's a fucking Muslim. He took me. He's a fucking. Here. He's a fucking Muslim. He's a fucking human being. 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 He's a historical evidence is not scientific. It's testimony. So science is something which cannot explain logic. Cannot explain mathematics, cannot explain testimony, and it cannot explain the vast majority of our sources of knowledge. But it's the best way to check claims that are made about. It's the best way to check claims that are made about how the universal biology works. And so, if someone makes a claim that oh, uh, like reproduction, like uh, passing on of hereditary traits works this way, the best way to test that is with science. And if you find that. Oh, science! All the scientific evidence shows that, in fact, it's via genes, not determined by who orgasms first. Then you should you should uh, have little confidence in the claim which says that it is unless to, uh, like orgasming. I, I agree with like you. That. I agree with you totally, sir. Unless you have independent evidence which gives you reasons to believe the other claim. Well, you'd have, it would have to outweigh kind of all this. Science. Exactly. So now we're talking about epistemic weighing. Yes. So hypothetically. If there is a book which has five predictions, which are according to you precise, say it's not the Quran, and this book contradicts, say something which is a consensus in science, but this book you have verified has five prophecies which are fulfilled, does that mean you can say this book is wrong because of this one conclusion? If, if, the, if the claims made in the book are less impressive than the glaring error or, or, or have less if, there, if the impressiveness, the unusualness, the, the, the power of that claim within the book is, isn't able to outweigh kind of the weight of evidence that suggests that this claim about you know, a reproduction is false, then no, you, you wouldn't accept. But what if, it, what if it does? If it did, then yes, you would. That's the point. So the point, conceptually, we, did, we agree. Yeah. Now it's about content. Conceptually, we agree. If there's a book which makes predictions, which are extraordinary predictions, which are falsifiable, which are precise, which are time bound, whatever. Smart, as they say. Now, if you have that and you have a consensus, then you cannot say the book is wrong because of consensus conceptually. Well, it, it would, like, let's not call it just consensus. It's consensus based on like all the possible evidence. Whatever, whatever you want, whatever right you now. want, whatever you want. OK, now we have this. So conceptually, we agree. Now, here's the thing. Only 60 years ago, 70 years ago, the scientific consensus was the universe was eternal. Even oh, Einstein. No, no, there, there wasn't a consensus at that point. Of course, there was. No, like people didn't know what the people thought. Maybe the universe existed. Maybe we're talking. We're, no, we're, no, we're, 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 we're talking. We're talking about. Games. We're talking about physicists. Physicists believed in the static state model. Ooh. Well, that no, was the no, proof. That was like, you know, the most popular model. It doesn't mean it was like a consensus model. There wasn't, there wouldn't be any Sir, sir, <laughs> sir, give me, sir, no, okay, no sir, okay, put it no, this way. Sir, give me a model of the universe prior to the Big Bang model. We're not talking about ancient Greece. Let's talk about the last four, five hundred years. A model in physics which said the universe had a beginning other than the Big Bang. Okay, so. It's, it's not so having a model and calling it and like a, a proposed mechanism for the universe's creation. There wasn't a proposed mechanism, but there's still like like physicists wouldn't. Oh, we agree that yes, the, the universe is like uh, you know eternal. That that like that. that, I, that the I static state. That the, the static state model was the prevailing model of the universe, just like Big Bang is today. Like, to say that there's a consensus, like, you'd, okay, you'd, sir. you'd expect maybe 70% okay, you know, of uh, the physicists to okay, sign sir. their signatures. Okay, sir, what's the prevailing model today? The prevailing model is the Big Bang. Fantastic. Was the prevailing model in the 1930s? 
like it, like the most popular one would well like the thing is so you gave me a very simple answer yeah. about the big bang that's, was the prevailing model in 1930s no, uh, like the, the, the degree of subscription to the steady state model does not compare to the rate of subscription for, to the big sir, bang now sir, so don't, don't sir, compare them it, sir, was a less, it was a less supported sir, model so if we go down that road me and you we're going to completely get lost because me and you we don't have access to those statistics so I'm asking you a more general question. Well, I, I think you could ask a historian of science and they'd probably be able to give you an answer. Well, they won't give me, there were 55 people who agreed and 60 no, people who disagreed. Have, they have like proxy indicators. Sir, so, we're, so we're, 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 we're getting beyond. Yeah, we, are, we are getting past that. Yeah, we're, that's something that we could like check okay. and fact so, check later. So let's go to something more basic. Was the prevailing model? What? Was the prevailing model? <laughs> what, what is it now? What was it? What is it now? You already said a big bang. What was it then? That there wasn't necessarily one. There was one. Well, like the, the most popular one was the steady state. That doesn't Fantastic. Mean that, that, that doesn't mean that there was like a consensus on it, though. Sir, that the amount of belief in the steady sir, state model matches the amount sir, of belief in every, the big bang now. Sir, every single scientific model, when we say there is a consensus, in a popular culture, that means 100% subscription. Academically, we all understand that's not true. Even the big bang model today is challenged by some who believe in the eternal universe. Right? So here's the point. The Quran said, says the universe has a beginning. Before 1950s, the Quran was against that model of the universe, which was the prevailing theory. But I, as a Muslim in the 1950s, I would have said, I accept the steady state model as a valid model. I accept even Einstein accommodated it in his general theory of relativity. I accept all of the facts that majority of the scientists believed in it. I accept that. But I, will not, but I will not believe that it's absolutely true. I will simply say it's a working model. No, but so, that, that's different so, from that to so bro, with genetics. Conceptually, conceptually, we don't disagree. Now it's about content. Conceptually, we're on the same page about epistemic weighing. So back to the prophecies. Tell me, if there was one prophecy that according to you, you would believe in, what would it be? Give me a criteria. Well, like, I, can, can we talk how about, um, you know, the, the claim that, like, the... No, 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 people... I want you to give me a criteria. That's all I want. Forget content. Okay. Tell me, you want something to be time-bound. You want something to be unpredictable. For example, um, Mormon religion, who's the guy? Uh, Mormon religion. Joseph Smith. Joseph Smith. Joseph Smith, what did he say? He said, the American North and South, they're going to go to war. 50 years before they went to war. But the problem with that is that was predictable because politicians, even before him, were saying the North and South are going to go to war. But here's the, here's the mistake he made. The Mormons, they use it as evidence that he's a prophet of God because he made a prediction which came true, even though the prediction was predictable. And people were saying this before him. However, he made the mistake of adding to the prediction. He said the North and the South are going to go to war and then the rest of the world is going to join in and it's going to be a global war, which it never was, right? So that's a false prophecy. I want you to give me, according to you, a criteria that's going to please you, which is say, I'm going to give you the first one, something which is time bound, right? Something that's unpredictable. Tell me something else. What other criteria is going to fulfill you? Uh, like what, what would be a what would be a prophecy which if it came true not a I prophecy give me a criteria unpredictable and time bound what else unpredictable time bound that's, take your time that, that's probably can you think of any others i think that's probably pretty good that's quite good yeah okay. try and see if you can think of something else okay so uh, an, another kind of uh, like the thing is though that any time that there's a kind of uh, uh, something that scientifically contradicts the Quran or a prophecy in the Hadith. No, that look, sir, 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 we, like, sir, we, we just take we, the evidence. Sir, we already did that. Let's go by this. You said two things: time bound and unpredictable. Yes, but like, you, I'm, I'm sure you might be able to find uh, a prophecy which is, you know, quite unlikely. But uh, but like we, we already agreed before, if someone like makes some kind of good prophecies, but also makes kind of some nonsense prophecies. That isn't good. Sir, that isn't impressive. I totally agreed with that, which yeah. is why we had the previous conversation. Yeah. If someone so makes if, so loads of random, give, loads of another, random, uh, but, but uh, sir, don't conflate unfulfilled with falsified. And I think that's something that you're doing. Uh, 
uh, as, unless we like want to, you know, totally throw out kind of biology and genetics. So we're not, we're not, we're not challenging no, that. No, you, you are because like you're, you're um, drawing a parallel between believing in the Big Bang. Uh, and how physicists, there used to be a popular opinion that, oh, maybe there was a steady state model. Like, thinking about the origins of the universe is inherently an extremely speculative part of science. Like, you can't, you can't test sir, that very easily at all, sir, but you can sir, test genetics. Sir, evolutionary biology is also speculative. It's probabilistic. Well, Look, but, okay, but I'm not talking about evolutionary biology. Sir, I'm talking about genetics. Sir, okay. I'm talking about uh, development. Sir, that is that is evolutionary biology. Genetics well, is evolutionary well, no, biology. No, no, it's not. Yes, it is. No, you don't need to subscribe to the tree of life in order to believe in genetics. And no, genetics, but... uh, genetics alone and development and physiology, have, those contradict this claim that uh, like whether a man takes after his mother or his father depends on whether the mother or the father orgasms first. Sir, sir, that's, the that's thing is, the thing is here. Laughable claim. The, the thing is, sir, you have some misconceptions about the way science works. What you said is that you don't need to subscribe to the tree of life to be, uh, to take the conclusions of genetics. Yeah. Right. But sir, isn't it also true that you don't need to subscribe to the tree of life, you can subscribe to the web of life to actually take the conclusion of genetics too? Yeah. And the web of life is evolutionary biology? Well, well, well like, I thought when you said like evolutionary biology, I thought you were talking to like, you know, I thought you were referring to kind of everyone having a single common ancestor. Yeah, but that, that's one model. Yeah, they yeah, are the I models agree. too. I, no, but what, what I was saying was that you don't need to believe in uh, a web of life or a tree of life. You don't need to like subscribe like to one or the other to believe that kind of it's genes which kind of uh, confirm yeah, the but information. Genetics the is in genetics is inseparable from evolutionary biology. What? No, not really. Of course it is. No, like under creationism, even if I was like a young creationist, I could still believe in genetics. Yeah, but you'd still look. But the thing is, you did. So, wait, so wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. You're giving an example to defend yourself. You're giving young Earth creationism, but they are the people, the very people that atheists and agnostics like yourself attack, because they have a polarization where they accept parts of science and reject others. So those are not the people you want to marry yourself with. I, I, I'm, I'm not marrying myself with them. I'm, I'm showing you that Kev, you can. You, you're trying to like cast doubt. On, on genetics by saying by, by conflating genetics with I'm evolution. not casting doubt I'm accepting all of his conclusions I, I just take the conclusions by yeah, what they're based that, on oh, but it's going to be wrong in the future from, no, no, from no. some like no. sir, sir, kind of sir, magic look evidence. look conceptually let me break it down and you challenge me if I'm wrong we have evolutionary biology as a model theory paradigm what, what, what are the claims of that okay one second when, when you, when when you I, I'm, about, I'm, I'm about to make them which basically means our biochemistry, our genetics, our anatomy, our psychology, our linguistics, biogeography, the fossil record, all converges together to, to have a sort of tree of life, which is to explain the history of life on Earth. That is the grand idea. That is the field. So when we're speaking about genetics, you can't separate it from evolutionary biology. You can't. Yeah, let me, let me explain. So genetics makes do you know? That... Do you know the most frequently used definition of evolution is the change in uh, gene frequencies. Yes. Genetics. Yeah. This is inseparable. No, but like a, a geneticist could, like, let, let's suppose that I am a young earth creationist who works in genetics. Don't I, I would then believe 